Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber Girl. Thank you for watching. A couple weeks or so ago, I did a video about the Eagle CAD process of moving from schematic to printed circuit board to manufacturing. And in that video, I mentioned the design rule check process for the printed circuit board ma manufacturing. And I think I mentioned during that video that I was going to do a follow on video and this is the video. So I want to walk you through the design rule check process of Eagle CAD and talk about the things that are important and things that are not so important and why design rule check is really important to getting a solid printed circuit board uh, manufactured and then getting the, the the final part you know built so let's switch over to eagle cad and let's get on with it so here we are in eagle cad and i have the printed circuit board pulled up and you can see here i'm gonna flip let me flip over to the schematic just for very briefly we have all these leds connected to each other um, per the previous video which we've linked before so they're just laid out in a very uh, a series manner here and uh, in a very thin strip, which is what I'm looking for for this particular design. So let's flip over to the DRC and let me walk you through. And so DRC stands for Design Roll Check. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through real, real quickly what uh, the vast preponderance of the settings that they have here that you need to be concerned about. Okay. So first off, you can load uh, whichever uh, rule set you want. In this case, I have the one from Seed Studio uh, that I've actually tweaked a little bit to meet what I personally want. And I'll get to that in probably just a minute. So first off, right off the bat, uh, the layers. So there's not a whole lot here you need to tweak with unless you have multiple layers of a, of a printed circuit board. In this case, it's just a two layer printed circuit board. Uh, so no, nothing here magical. Clearance is really where it, this is one of the primary areas you need to focus in on when you're making a printed circuit board. So let me talk to you a little bit about how this works. So wire, pad, and via, and then SMD, surface mount device, pad, and via. Um, and I'll talk about this means and why it's like kind of uh, stepped like this. So what this means is uh, the wire clearance pad clearance and via appearance uh, clearance and then the wire to wire uh, wire to pad pad to pad via to pad and via to via if that makes sense it's, it's a little think about it like a spreadsheet right so wire to wire pad to pad via to via and then you have your different options here so what i have set up here is really relatively simplistic but but it works so it's just six mils uh, across the board, six thousandths of an inch across the board clearance, wire to wire, pad to pad, uh, pad to via, via to via. Uh, you can tweak with tweak this if you want. Um, I, I would say go no less than five mils for a lots of different reasons. Um, six works because that's kind of the medium ground uh, amongst the manufacturers what they can achieve at a relatively low cost. So, and if you click on the different things here, the icon will change and show you what it means. So wire to wire is really trace to trace, right? Uh, so this is wire to pad, which is the distance between your trace and your pad here. And then uh, via to wire, which is the distance between the wire and the via. Then here you have pad to pad, which is this distance right here, right? And then a uh, via to pad, which is the different uh, the distance between this kind of a maroon reddish thing to the green. And then via to via, which is just the distance between the vias. Uh, so this here is a distance uh, between the copper and the dimension, which is really the, the amount of distance between a trace or any sort of copper fill in the outside dimension of your printed circuit board or any sort of hole or tab you might have. And then this is the distance between the drills. Uh, and what that really means is the, the and any hole that you have or any plated through hole that you have. And so in this case, it would be a pad that's a plated through hole or any hole to hole. Now sizes here, this is the minimum width. Uh, this is uh, the trace width, the minimum trace width that you would generate. Now you can lay down any trace that you want. Uh, when you run the design rule check here, it'll flag it if it's below six mils. Uh, the drill here is a, a minimum of 12. Uh, this is the, the micro via and then what is known as the blind via. I'm not going to go down to what a blind or a buried via is in this particular video. 
annular ring. Now this is something that's actually quite complicated. Uh, at the end of the day, just trust me on kind of sort of leaving this on the stock values. Uh, there's a certain percentage and you can see here. So this is what is known as a plated through hole. This is actually a pretty good picture to show you what this means. Plated through a hole is, see the green here? These are the printed circuit board layers. And then the, the gray here are what is known as the um, isolation layers or the, the different layers that are in between the copper layers. So a plated through hole really is this red part, which is a hole that goes from the top all the way through to the bottom and then provides copper into the middle layers here. And so what that allows you to do is if you have a multiple layer printed circuit board, in this case, this example is three layers. So you have a copper layer here, a copper layer here, and a copper layer there. You can route traces or, or do wiring between these three different layers. So the annular ring is literally the distance from the, the outside of the copper hole here until you uh, lead out here on the top and the bottom layer. And why is this important? Well, because the drill bits are not as accurate as the laydown of the copper. So if your annular ring is too small, when the drill bit comes in, it, has, it might be a little bit off to one side or another and might drill through your trace and you might lose connectivity. So if your annular, annular ring is big enough, uh, it'll make sure no matter what the registration error is on the drill bit that you will have that connectivity. So in this case, uh, it's labeled as a, a, a minimum in terms of absolute values and a maximum in terms of absolute value and then a percentage. Uh, I, I don't tweak with this too much, and you can see here that it's the bottom, the, uh, the top, the inner. Uh, you can set all these independently, and then the same with the vias, and then a the micro vias. Uh, I don't really change any of this. I found that these values work pretty well. I'll be honest with you, when I was doing this professionally, these values are a little tight. Uh, I did a slightly larger annular ring. I, I always liked... Uh, like when we had a 12 mil drill, for example, I wouldn't, 10 mil uh, annular ring would not be what I would have used. I would use something larger. <laughs> um, but this works uh, so far. I, I've not had any issues with the, the printed, for, uh, printed circuit board manufacturing process being the registration being any issue here. So uh, shapes here, uh, these are just, again, the, the distances between the different shapes, not a big deal there. Supply. One thing I want to note here, uh, so supply is if you have a power ground layer or if you have a large pore area, which I'm, I can demonstrate maybe uh, in, a, in a different video, but uh, what you want to do for your uh, vias is you want to, you want to create what is known as a thermal or a thermal isolation for the via. And that picture here is, is right here. What that means is rather creating a solid pour for the annular ring around the via, you want to create these little breaks right here. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, if you have a big pour of copper, when you're soldering, that big pour of copper is going to suck the heat away from the, 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 the solder. And so that decreases, um, when, it, when it's pulling the heat away from that solder, it decreases the solder ability um, or the, the amount of uh, the, the heat that's going toward the solder and pulls it out into the, the big pore of copper. So if you have these breaks here, the copper is really only in these four corners, if you want to look at it that way, and it decreases the amount of heat that it sucks away from the solder. And so that's why it's called thermal isolation. So when you're, when you're soldering, it doesn't pull all that heat away from the solder. That's really, really important when you have a super dense print circuit board um, and when you have a tight pitch of the surface mount devices. So... Uh, last thing, or next to the last thing here, is just the isolation between the solder mask and the the uh, copper pores here. So there's, uh, again, the, the solder, they call it the stop or the solder mask, and then the cream, which is the cream is the amount of area around the solder mask where, where you lay down paste. So cream is equivalent to the solder paste. Um, I'm sure that's like 1970s, 1980s terminology, but that's just what they call it. So you just kind of got to get used to it. So you can see here the dimensions here, the, the tolerances are significantly smaller. 
Um, I wish I can zoom in on this picture, but what it really means is they're going to leave a, no uh, less than two mils around the pad, no less than two mils around the, um, in this case, this is a, a hole or a, a plated through hole. Um, and then it says a max of two mils or 100%. So, you know, it is what it is there. And then miscellaneous, I haven't found anything here that I've ever needed to use, to be honest with you. I really stick to the clearance here and then the distances. And then if I needed to muck with uh, the shapes and the supply here, I will tell you generate thermals for VIA is generally not checked. Um, and so you see here this file, this is a Seab Studio file with uh, my initials on the end. Um, the only difference between their stock file and my file is that checkbox right there. So I'll just go ahead and click check. You can see nothing happens. That means there are no errors. Um, so that's, that's what you're looking for. So that's the walkthrough of the uh, design rule check. Okay, so that was my kind of quick walk through the design rule check process in EcoCAD. And hopefully you got a, a good overview of the different parameters you need to worry about when you're making a printed circuit board. The, the most important parameter really is the trace to trace width and the trace to uh, via width and then the trace to um, dimension width or the, uh, the outside parameters. Um, the everything else you really don't need to worry about from a hobbyist perspective. Uh, I mean, if you want to make some super high-end printed circuit boards, quite honestly, I'm not sure I would recommend EagleCAD for that process. Uh, although I got to tell you that over the last six months or so, they've been doing tremendous work and making it just a lot better of a, of a product. And uh, now that Autodesk has purchased them, they're really ramping up the quality of what you can do with it and the, the, the capabilities and the skills of the tool. So I'm super excited about the future for this. And I really hope that you get the opportunity to use it and, and play around with it. And if you have any questions, please, you know, leave them down below. Um, uh, I want to help uh, educate the community on how to use this tool. As always, if you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you don't, appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Don't forget to subscribe. It's really important these days to subscribe. So uh, get back into the YouTube Creator Program. And uh, if you have you know, any questions, again, leave them down below. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks, everyone.